Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna to be setting up this thing right here, super excited. I'm thinking to go for like a small nano jungle style aquascape, so really wild, really densely planted. I have some really great pieces of hardscape and I have a lot of plants coming in as well. I haven't really decided on the fish yet, but I'm thinking to either go for a small group of the sparkling gouramis or a small group of the black tiger dario or like a slightly larger group with the small chili rasboras. I think something like that would be really cool. Now I'm sure some of you are wondering what happened to the previous layout in this aquarium because I used to have a small group of the green neon rasboras in here. And they've recently moved to this aquarium. This one is 60 centimeter. And I feel like this one is better suited for these green neon rasboras. They're quite active fish, quite active swimmers. So now they have a little bit more space. Now going back to this one, the reason I took this previous layout down was basically because it got completely covered in algae. Now normally I wouldn't break down the tank just because there's some algae in there. But in this case it was actually pretty bad. We had a lot of really stubborn algae. And getting the tank back in shape, getting the plants back in shape would just take a very long time. So I decided to just start over. So what we have here is a 45p aquarium. So it's a standard size. So it measures 45 centimeters from left to right. It's 30 centimeters tall. And I think it's 27 centimeters front to back. So it holds roughly 35, 36 liters. So just under 10 gallons, I guess. Then on top of the tank, we have a light. This one is from Twinstar and this is their C series. This one also has a dimmer on the side. So there's a little button here. You can increase or decrease the intensity. And then behind the tank, you also have a light screen. So this is just a thin panel with some LED lights inside that you can dim as well. It really is just a fancy gadget, very unnecessary, but it looks pretty cool. I have one on this aquarium as well. Yeah, it really is just a fancy gadget. You can basically get the exact same result with this uh, white plastic you can find in your local hardware store. And this costs like 5 euros. And the light screen is like 100 to 200 euros. And as you can see, it looks almost exactly the same. Let's get started on our substrate layer. For that, I'm going to be using aqua soil. This time I'm going to use the Neo soil from Aqua Rio. Uh, this is probably still my favorite brand to this date. It really contains a lot of nutrients. And I just had really good results with this. Maybe later I'll also use some cosmetic sand and cosmetic gravel, but that kind of depends on how our hardscape develops. So let's start with this first. So with this soil, you always get these packs of root tabs in there as well. So here we have the iron tabs. And there's one more in there. This one is the regular one with the NPK fertilizers. So this is pretty cool, but I always save them and I add them later. I would never add them from the beginning because there's already so much nutrients in here and this would just be overkill from the very start. So if you get this soil, just save these packages and add them after like three, four months, something like that. Now I've poured in the whole bag. It was already open, so I think there was still like maybe five or six liters left. Maybe a bit too much, but you can always remove some. Okay, substrate is in. Now let me show you guys the hard skin materials I want to use in this tank. First of all, the rocks. I have them right here. These are the elderly stones or elderly rocks. It's a product from Wio as well. And this is the same rocks that I've used in the first layout on the Big Shallow. I had some really big pieces there. Now I'm just going to use a few small ones. So these are really nice. They really have a lot of detail to them. And they just look ancient, you know. So that's, I really like that. And then for the wood, I have this piece right here. This is called Rebel Tree. Also a product from Wio. No idea what kind of wood it is, but it looks really nice. So this was actually one piece. But as one piece, it was just too big for this tank. So I actually split it in half. So I just took my very not sharp hand saw and I just went to town for like half an hour. And now we have two pieces and so we can put one on each corner. I think that's going to look really nice. Now if you want to get the most out of your hardscape, I would also suggest to pick up each piece individually and just look at which side has the most detail. So this rock for example, this side is a bit dirty, this side is a bit flat. I think I'm going to go with this side, it looks nice. So we start adding this in. And then we look, maybe we just try a different angle, but a bit more upright, a bit more leaning towards the right side. And then we do that with every single piece of hardscape. Of course, it's a bit of a time consuming process, but this process is yeah, definitely worth it. So take your time, enjoy it, and just build nice hardscapes. Here we go. So it's not finished yet, but this is kind of the rough idea that I had in mind. So two pieces of wood on each side, and then an open area in the middle, some rocks around it. So this is just the first draft, and now we need to fine tune it. 
So let's do that next. Yeah, I think it looks great. I really hope you guys like it as well. So basically the only thing I did is I removed a few small branches from those two main pieces and kind of reattached them more down low. So this piece over there, that piece and that one. Just kind of make it look more together. That kind of as if everything is kind of flowing into each other, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it just looks a bit more natural right now. Before we just had two really separate pieces and now everything is kind of blending into each other. So I think we're ready for planting now. And this just came in as well. Perfect timing. Let's do a little plant unboxing. So yeah, big thank you to Denla Plants for always supporting me with these projects. Let's see what they've sent us this time. Yeah, we've got a load of really, really good stuff. So don't worry, this is not all going in the 45p. I'm actually doing another tank, so this is for two setups. So yeah, we've got a bunch of different in vitros. We have some Junkers Repens. We have my favorite moss of all time, the Ricardia. It's not actually a moss, but a liverwort. Then we also have some flame moss. This I haven't used much in my scapes, but I think I'm gonna be using it a bit more often. This moss actually grows upright instead of sideways. Then on this side, we have a cool plant as well. The Anubias Nana Pangolino. This is like the smallest, the smallest Anubias out there. Love it. And then we have a few tops of the Dwarf Hairgrass, Eleocaus Pusilla. This one's cool as well. This is a new plant from Denela. Yeah, I'm not gonna pronounce that. But it kind of looks like a Busa Philandra, but it's a little bit bigger. But it grows very, very slowly. It's quite an easy plant as well. So that's cool. Uh, we have some in vitro Cryptocorin as well. The Wendy Ti Broadleaf. I don't think I've used this one either. So yeah, curious about this one. And then we have some more Crypts on this side. So of course, you know, you can't go wrong with Crypt Parva. Look at the quantity in this pot. That's really, really nice. This one is new as well, the Crypt Valkyrie Legroy. It's a beautiful small crypt. It doesn't really grow much bigger than this and it really has these like orangey browny leaves. Really beautiful. And then in the back we have some really nice giant hair grass. This is the Eleocaris vivipara. We have a new type of Busophilandra as well, the Busophilandra Red Scorpio. This looks really nice. Looking forward to using it as well. So let me prepare the plants that I need for this setup and then I'll see you guys in a little bit. Right, we're ready to get started. Plants are all prepared. Now this is going to be quite a long process because I have a lot of plants that are going to go in here. So it's going to take quite some time. So I would always recommend to make it yourself as comfortable as possible. So I have a chair next to it with the plants on a good height so I don't have to bend over to, to grab them. So I'm going to save my lower back. I'm also going to put on some background music and just really enjoy this process. You know, it's kind of therapeutic. It just kind of helps you relax. So yeah, I'm definitely going to enjoy this process. Let's start with the Dwarf Hagras in the foreground. It's going to take up the entire foreground area, but also leading up towards the, uh, the background, basically. So just like a triangle, I guess. Yeah, I have some beautiful Crypt Parva and I'm thinking to plant this basically on the edges of the rock. So just the, the outside edges basically, just underneath that big wood stump. Yeah, that Crypt Parva looks so good, so nice, love it. Next up, I want to fill in the front corner here with some Marcella Herzuta. It's a plant that almost looks a little bit like a, like a four-leaf clover. So it's going to start mixing with the dwarf handgrass and the parva. It's going to look very natural. Okay, moving on to another crypt. This is the Legroy. It's a little bit small right now. It will grow slightly bigger, basically the same size as the Crypt Parva. So I'm going to plant it next to it. This one also has a little bit different color, so it will be yeah, a nice contrast. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now we need to fill in the area underneath both pieces of wood. Of course, we have a little bit of shadow there. So I'm thinking more crypts and also this plant right here. This is the uh, Junkus Weepens. It's a really grassy type plant, grows quite slowly. But hopefully it will kind of like poke through all these branches. And um, yeah, it's something I've never tried before, but I'm curious how that's going to look. That's the right side done. So we have the bigger crypt, the crypt Lutea. We have the Junkus Ripens, and then this really small in vitro crypt Venetii broadleaf. Still gonna grow bigger, but it's very tiny right now. But I think that looks good. Now, just, I just noticed that the plants are starting to dry out. So let's give everything a little spray, and then we continue with the left side as well. I think we're almost done with the planting. The only thing that's still missing in the background is the tall hair grass. I'm gonna save that till last. Next, I wanna move on to some small details on the rocks and the wood. For that, we're gonna use the uh, Nubius pangolino as well as the Ricardia. Okay, fast forward, it's actually almost been a month since we set up this tank. Today we're finally going to add fish to it. But look at the growth in this tank guys. After one month we almost have a full carpet of dwarf hair grass already. It's looking good. So normally I would wait like two, maximum three weeks before we add fish to a new setup. But this time I waited a little bit longer because we had quite a bit of startup algae. I'll overlay a clip from uh, how the tank was looking like a week ago. Um, yeah, we have a window, a big window on the left side. So I was getting a little bit of sunlight in this tank. And sunlight in a new setup is always a recipe for disaster. <laughs> but it's no, it's no big deal. I've just added some Mamano shrimp, I've added some Olocinclus, and I've also added my entire group of orange Neo Carolina shrimp to this tank as well. So they've been uh, cleaning everything up really nicely. So we already have some, yeah, just some nice inhabitants in this tank. But we need some, we need some fish for it. So yeah, I'm just about to head out and go to my local fish shop. Still not exactly sure what I want for this tank. I like to just go to the shop, see what they have available and make a decision there. Right, we're back in my local fish shop, Hames. Guys are doing some construction, so it might be a little bit noisy in the background, but I've already had a look around and I think we have a few options for that little nano tank. All right, so first option would be the chili rasboras. Mm, they're still very, very small, but they have quite a lot of them. So we could go for a big group of chili rasboras. I think they would look nice. Then over here they have a different type of dwarf rasbora. This is the rasbora maculata. I think these guys will go a little bit bigger, but they are not as vibrant red as the actual chili rasbora. So could be an option, but I'm not sure. But then if we come across on this side, I saw these little tiny guys, the dwarf pea puffers. They have a few of them. Now, honestly, I've never had pea puffers before and I don't really know a lot about them, but these guys are really, really cute. Could be an option as well. well let's keep looking around. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. I was looking at these guys as well, the uh, honey gourami. But um, these guys are very right now they don't look very nice but especially the males get a beautiful orange color 
I was doing some research and most websites say that the E-Scan should have 60 centimeters at least, so yeah, the 45p is too small for them. So I was kind of, lead, kind of leaning towards the Chile Reservoirs, but I've already kept them before and I've never kept uh, pea puffers before, so I think we should go with these guys. So I think there was some miscommunication at the store because I asked them for two pea puffers and I just opened a bag and there's only one in there. It's so sad. I don't know, maybe one pea puffer in a 45 centimeter tank is actually good because I was reading that they can be a little bit aggressive. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. We can always go back and, uh, and buy a second one. For now, let's just start activating this guy. I'll also turn the light off to make sure he doesn't get any stress. And then we'll come back later and release him. So it's now the next day and I'm just getting ready to feed our pea puffer for the first time. I've been doing a lot of reading on them because I knew absolutely nothing about pea puffers. So apparently they prefer mostly like live or frozen food, so like bloodworms, stuff like that. So I just got some live tubifex worms, hoping he or she will like that. Yeah, so because he's still very small, um, it's, you can't really tell yet if he's a male or female, so I'm just gonna call him a he for now. And he is very hard to find, but he's over there in the back. You might just be able to spot him. Yeah, let's see if he's hungry. I've just turned off the filter so that we don't have any flow in the aquarium. So I'm just going to take a little bit of these worms. So apparently we also have to be careful not to overfeed our pea puffer because that's a possibility. So I've just added a little bit of these worms. The shrimp are already going at it, but he has not found them yet. I don't know where he is right now. I'm just going to wait here a little bit and uh, once he finds them, I'm going to turn on the camera again. Well, getting him to eat or at least capture him eating on camera turned out to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. I don't know if he just wasn't hungry or he really didn't see the food, but every time I would drop some worms right in front of his nose, he just swam away. One time he did grab a worm, but immediately disappeared behind a rock where I couldn't see him. But today I tried again and I finally managed to get a decent clip of him biting on some worms. Even though I initially planned to go for different types of fish, I'm really happy I made the decision to try pea puffers. This guy really has a personality and seeing him interact with this environment is a lot of fun to watch. If you have never tried pea puffers before, I definitely recommend you setting up the tank for them. I'm still not entirely sure if I should get a second pea puffer, but maybe it's best to wait until we figure out if he's a male or female. If you stayed all the way to the end, I have one more question for you. Light screen or no light screen? I can't decide. But that's it guys, hope you enjoyed this build video, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.